Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me today. And today we're going to be talking all about EQ correction for your room and speakers. Is it worthwhile? Should you be doing it? Should you be using the EQ built into your speaker? Should you use a fancier system? Is it going to help you out? Or is it a bunch of snake oil? Or is it going to make things worse? Well, I've got to tell you, I've come a long way on EQ correction. I used to not recommend it to people that often, but in more recent years, I've started to find and discover that more people should probably be using the EQs built into their speakers, and more people should probably be using some type of EQ correction, even if they have really great room and speakers to work with. And I'm going to talk about some reasons why, whether you're at the very low end, whether you're kind of in the middle or you're at the very high end, there are good reasons to think about adding in EQ correction to your listening system. And I'm going to give you some principles you can apply no matter what kind of system you're on, what kind of speakers you're using. And thanks to our friends at KRK, I get to bring you this third and final installment in this series on getting your monitoring together for free. So big thanks to KRK for sending me this pair of lovely Rocket G4, Rocket 7s to check out, which incidentally have a really ingenious EQ built in that we'll talk about in a little bit. But first, I want to give you some of the major core principles about whether and why you should be using EQ. All right, so first things first, EQ to me is kind of the icing on the cake. You really want to focus on speaker selection, speaker placement, and room treatment first. Fortunately, we have two videos for you in this series about just that. So if you haven't checked them out, check them out now. I'll link to them in the show notes down below and here on screen as well. But assuming that you've got your speakers chosen in a way where you're getting speakers that are going to suit your needs, your preferences, your biases, you've got them placed in a room to mitigate some low frequency and other problems to begin with, and you've spent some of your resources or time in acoustically treating, EQ can do a lot. You are never going to get 100% of the way to flat ever through just speaker selection, speaker placement, and acoustic treatment alone. You got to get those things together first, but they won't get you 100% of the way there. EQ correction can take you even, even further. And it can be really simple stuff like the built-in EQ in a speaker, or it can be a much more significant system, whether it's done DIY or you're spending a few hundred dollars or several thousand dollars or more. And I'll give you some principles and some guidelines about what each of those types of systems are for, what kind of studios they're designed for, and which ones you should potentially look at in your own room. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the simplest of things, which is the EQ often built into speakers. For a long time, a lot of speakers have been coming out with low shelf and high shelf EQs that you can adjust on them. And these can be really useful, especially in smaller rooms. One of the big problems, though, is that so many of the people who need them the most are the least likely to use them because they're going to be a little bit intimidated by the prospect of using an EQ. How am I going to know how to set it? How am I going to know when it sounds right? I'm just starting to get into this. I'm just buying my first set of speakers for a few hundred dollars. I'm supposed to figure out how I should be setting the EQ on this thing? How? I'll give you some principles, and I'll also give you some access to some free tools that are going to help you make those determinations. To go a little deeper into this concept, I want to talk a little bit more about an idea that we started in the first part of the series when I talked about placing your speakers right. I'm going to give you the super abbreviated Cliff Notes version of speaker placement in the room. Definitely check out that video for all of the principles at play. But one of those principles is that a fairly good place to start in most rooms is with your speakers maybe 20% of the room's length and width away from the walls, and then listening to music that you're familiar with and you love the sound of, adjusting the distance of those speakers, probably in most rooms, moving them further and further back towards the wall. Now, depending on the size of your room and what worked best in your room, you may have ended up finding your speakers really close to the wall. And one of the issues, if your speakers start to get too, too close to the wall, is that you can get an overall kind of base shelf up. So you're going to be hearing too much low end in the room. And this can be problematic because 
your mix decisions and your recording decisions can steer you in a way where you're going to get bass light recordings and mixes and masters because you're hearing so much bass in your room, you're not boosting enough bass. So because you're hearing so much bass in the room, your finished product sounds bass light and weak in the bass. This is extremely common for people using smaller monitors in smaller rooms to have that kind of bump up because they're less than a few feet from a wall. The simple, easy thing to do to fix this is to use a low shelf EQ. Well, how much low shelf EQ? At what frequency? Fortunately, you don't have to use just your ears because KRK has this free iOS and Android app that you can download to your mobile device that has a real-time analyzer built in. And this will allow you to visualize what's going on in your room, how far you are off from neutral. It's even got its own signal generator built in. You can just click here, play some pink noise through your system. All you've got to do is just get a cable out to your two speakers. They just take you know quarter-inch input or XLR inputs in the back. You can use this with any speakers. Play some pink noise through them and then see how far off you are from being neutral and flat. If you end up getting a set of KRK speakers, this app will even tell you exactly how you should adjust the EQ on it, making things a little bit easier. And it's pretty easy to do. You just take the preset EQ they recommend, you just go in here, say to your low frequency EQ, and just select whatever of the presets it recommends based on the feedback from the app. And this is super useful, this kind of especially low shelving if you're close to a wall. Whether you have a really inexpensive set of speakers or a really high-end set of speakers, that's the first thing to evaluate is whether you should be doing any low shelving potentially to the sound of your speakers. And that's why almost all sets of active monitors these days have a low shelf built onto them. In a significant majority of cases, the speakers are going to be close enough to a wall where they'll need some shelving down. And in the case where that's not happening, they're probably far enough from the wall that they may have a resonance point that you may need to adjust for. Both of those scenarios are really common. But there are no conditions under which you're going to have absolutely perfect EQ settings just from your speaker placement alone. As far as speaker EQs go, the KRK one is actually a fairly sophisticated one that can do more than most built-in EQs on most speakers. And even more importantly, they can give you some guidance as to which of these settings to use so you don't have a potentially useful EQ just sitting there unused, which is what happens in so many situations because a lot of people are afraid to touch these EQs. Getting that guidance from an app like the KRK app will give you some confidence to actually use and set the EQ on this sucker, which is super important. Having tools around that you don't use doesn't necessarily do you very much good, especially if you should be using them. But no matter how good the onboard EQ is on a set of speakers like the KRKs, they can only do so much. And onboard EQs are generally going to be limited to helping you tweak a couple of problems in the low end and the top end. At higher and higher levels, as people progress in the process, they're generally going to get interested in maybe more refined forms of EQ correction. And there are today some kind of off-the-shelf solutions for that. Back in the day, you would have had to get a measurement microphone, which were very expensive back then relative to what they are now, and then maybe some hardware graphic EQs that you'd put in front of your monitors. But these days, these off-the-shelf solutions could be something like Sonarworks. That's a very popular all-in-one solution. IK Multimedia has their ARC system, and there are other options out there all the way up to the Trinov systems, which instead of costing a few hundred dollars, can cost a few thousand dollars or more. It's still possible to DIY this whole approach by getting a measurement microphone, which are pretty inexpensive these days, and then setting up some EQ curves in your DAW. But these off-the-shelf solutions, whether as inexpensive as the ARC system or the Sonar Work system or as expensive as the Trinov system, are generally going to give you a lot more EQ points to work with, and there's a lot more automation in the process that can remove some of the second guessing and really help you analyze what you're doing. I would say that to get started, absolutely check out the KRK app, which will give you a sense totally for free for what's going on in your room and where your problem areas might be. If you're looking to get into really sophisticated EQ correction with multiple points beyond what you can do with an onboard EQ, then that's going to require slightly more sophisticated solutions. 
But the great thing, again, about a speaker like KRK, something in this price range, is that when you're spending only a few to several hundred dollars on a speaker system, then it's much easier to justify adding on to your budget something like a Sonarworks or ArchEQ system or something like that, where you're spending a few hundred dollars more to really get the most out of the speakers. And that's why I often encourage people, get the best speakers you can within reason. But always make sure that you're leaving some room in your speaker budget, one, for acoustic treatment. And these days, I'm telling people, leave some room in your speaker budget for EQ correction. Because I would rather get a really solid set of speakers that doesn't break the bank and have some room left for a little bit of treatment on the wall. And these days, some of these really simple, off-the-shelf, easy-to-use EQ systems than to blow my entire budget on the nicest set of speakers I can imagine in my price range and then not have anything left over for any acoustic treatment or EQ correction. If you are at the higher end of things, should you go for a few hundred dollar EQ correction system like, say, Sonarworks, or should you spend the thousands of dollars on something like the Trinov system? Well, that's a personal choice, but I will say that one of the limitations potentially with the Sonarworks system is it's not necessarily that great yet at switching back and forth between multiple sets of speakers. That's something where the Trinov system that also acts as a monitor controller really comes in handy because you can have different EQ settings for each of your speakers. And as soon as you click one button, you're switching to a new set of speakers and a new EQ. Whether that's worth spending closer to four or $5,000 rather than three or $400 is up to uh, your needs, your budget, the kind of work you're doing, whether you can justify that expense. But with a little bit of extra work when you're switching between speakers, the sonar work system really is a fantastic one that we've been recommending to a lot of people. And there are probably going to be a lot more solutions like that out there. For those of you who cannot justify spending a few hundred dollars or more on EQ correction for your room, then it's even more essential to you to find a system like this one where you have a good EQ built in that will give you some feedback on how to use it. Because like I said, the biggest problem with the EQs built into so many speakers is that people lack guidance on using them and don't ever even turn them on. And that is again where the KRK app and its built-in EQ recommendation system really comes in handy. And if you didn't have the foresight to get a set of speakers that has a feature like that, you can use this KRK app still to give you some information for free about how your speakers and your room are working together and will at least give you a sense about how far you are off on your bass and your treble so you can adjust the EQ on your speakers to give yourself a little bit of extra lift in the bass or decrease the bass slightly, which is often needed in smaller studios with speakers closer to the wall. So you can still get some insights even if you don't have a speaker system that has that kind of feature built in. Well, I hope this one has been useful to you. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonics Group, brought to you once again by KRK. Thank you, KRK, for sending me this set of lovely Rocket 7 G4 speakers and for allowing us to bring you this three-part series for free. If you like this installment, be sure to check out the other two on placing your speakers in the studio and acoustic treatment for your studio. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.